Hey guys, I wanted to show you an easy way and the quickest way to package application SCCM. Uh, I do it where I work a little bit more different, but just to show you the concept and just how easy it is without any scripts or anything like that involved. So what we could do is go ahead and try to package uh, Adobe Acrobat or Adobe Reader Acrobat DC. So let's just go ahead and download that W Reader Enterprise version. And then this doesn't really matter, but we'll do Windows 8. We'll do English and DC. So let's download that. Uh, to extract the exe, I'm going to use a uh, 7-zip. Not all exes are extractable, uh, just depends. So, just gonna open up 7-zip real quick. And go to downloads. I already had it downloaded. So let's extract and I'm going to put this under C, applications, new folder. I'm going to call this Adobe Reader Acrobat DC. Hit OK. Close out of this. OK. So now in here, we'll just move this outside just to make things cleaner. Take this folder since we don't need it. All right, so we got the MSI now. That's what we need. Um, it's easier to work with MSIs. Uh, you create MSTs for it. Later on, we'll go more into it, but let's go ahead and open up the console. And let's go to software library, applications, and we're going to create a new application. And let's do this manually. We'll name this Adobe Reader Acrobat DC. Publishers Adobe. Uh, we get the version real quick just by. Uh, details are in the exe. Hope I give us that information. So properties, details. There we go. We got the version. Version. This is not necessary, but just so you be clean. So two zero three three. All right. Uh, this is pretty much it. Here, uh, this is what's going to show up in Software Center. So, I like to show the version. That way, the users can see what version is getting installed. So, let's do that. And everything else is fine. If you want to add an icon, you can here. But, and then this is if you had a portal in the internet browser, you can download from there. We're not going to do that today. All right, so now we're going to have a deployment type. So we're going to add a deployment type, and this is where we specify the MSI installer and the, how to install it. So I'll show you that right now. So we're going to name this Adobe Reader Acrobat DC version. I like to put the versions on here. I'll, I'll explain a little bit uh, why a little bit later. Uh, there we go. All right, so now we're going to point it to where the content lives. So it has to be a UNC path, but I could just go to my computer here. All right, so now let's go to Applications, Adobe, and this is where the, you can't see it, but this is where the setup MSI is at. 
uh, let's rename I like to name the MSI's by complete names Adobe Reader Acrobat DC version 15 7 dot two zero zero three three need to say I know it's kind of long but it's just a lot cleaner just to leave it like that so let's just go ahead and copy this so I have to retype that so here this is where we're going to specify how to install the program in the next video I'm going to show you how to install it through a, through a batch file or a script here we're just going to do all here in this one command so we're going to call MSI exec dot exe the switch for install and we're going to give it the MSI and then we're going to use uh, quiet non-interactive and no restart that way in case you install this program where while somebody is using the computer and if it needs to restart it doesn't do it right away so here, um, in the next video, I'll show you how to uninstall it with the script, and um, you don't have to specify any GUIDs. That's, I'll explain that right now, but it's just the PowerShell script that runs and looks for that specific program and uninstalls it for you. I'll show you that in the next video, but I'll show you how to install it using the GUID, the unique identify number. So just to get that, let's go ahead and install Adobe Reader and then so the PowerShell script is going to look in the same location and I'll show you what's going to, what it's going to do use the access, okay there we go so let's go to Reg edit, let's go to the registry okay so to show you the full path it's I'll start from the beginning so and local machine software uh, this is a 64-bit machine and this is a 32-bit application so this is where it would live but if it's a 64-bit location you would go here instead of starting from here so from there you'll go to Microsoft then you'll go to Windows current version and then uninstall and expand that then you just go through this and try to find Adobe Reader. There it is. So what the PowerShell script does is goes into this location here and uh, checks for the display name. And in the PowerShell script, we set the name to equal this. That way, if it finds this, it would use this uninstall string. Uh, but in some cases, you'll get a slash x or something like that, uh, or slash i, that's for repair, slash, s, slash x is to uninstall, so in this case it wouldn't be good. So what it does if it finds it, I'll go back here and copy this string here, and then I'll show you what command it runs right now. So let's copy this, just hit finish. So here we do MSI exec dot exe slash x to uninstall the GUID and let's do quiet no non interactive and no restart. So we actually could run this right now to uninstall Adobe Acrobat. Whoops, sorry about that. So we hit enter, you'll see this gone within seconds. There you go. And just to prove it, Adobe Reader's gone. Um, the bad thing about this is that you're going to have to update the GUID every single time. Um, just to automate it, I'll sh in the next video, I'll show you the PowerShell script that I use to uninstall basically you know, all the programs that I need to uninstall. So from here, we'll go next. Um, here is the detection method. Two ways of doing this: you can use a script to detect, you know, if the application installed, 
So once you push out application and it goes to the client, the client will run this uh, detection method. And if it doesn't detect, then you know, it'll go ahead and install. But in most cases, what I do is I just use the win window installer and use that same GUID. So we'll just delete the extra stuff here. There we go. And in case uh, the program has the same GUID for every version, you would still use the GUID and then just specify the version here. So after that, we can go hit next. And we're going to install this for your system, whether or not the user is logged in. Go ahead and hit next. Uh, we don't need no requirements right now. Uh, yep, that's good. And then uh, if case the software needed any dependencies, uh, you would uh, have it here if you have a package. Later on in the videos, I'll show you applications that need dependencies and how to do that. So we go ahead and next and next and close. So from here, we're just going to hit next. And then it's going to create the um, application here in the console. It'll probably show up in a few seconds. So yeah, basically this video, I just want to show you the easy way of packaging an application some cases, you know, this is faster for simple applications, but for applications that need customizations, uh, you're going to need to use scripts, and I'll show you that in the next video. So now we have this application. Just to explain it, uh, the reason why in the deployment types I put the version is because I like to keep this here, and for every new version that comes out, all I have to do is go here, properties, change the version, change the content, and just leave everything else the same. If And then, uh, of course, change the detection method. Uh, it makes it really simple for the new updates. One thing I like to change here is no specific action. Uh, just test the application before you package it, just to see if it requires a restart. If it does, make it restart. If it doesn't, then do no specific action, because sometimes if you base off return codes, for any little reason, if it errors out, you might get a forced restart, which doesn't give you a prompt. They'll just restart right then and there. So just hit OK. OK, so now we got to uh, deploy this application to our distribution point. Um, there's two ways of doing that. You can go ahead and hit distribute here, and go next, and continue. It's the same window, so I'll show you on this way. So when you deploy application, uh, here you're going to select your act collection. Next video I'll show you a little bit more organized. You have collections per software and then you import the computers in there but for now we'll just deploy to all systems. Um, just hit next. So here if you don't have it distributed yet it will give you this exclamation mark. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and distribute to our distribution point. Uh, for, for this case, I'm just going to install available, uh, so we have the option to install it. Um, you can schedule that application when to install in case you have users working. You can have this install at midnight or you know whatever you want. Here, I like to leave it at show notifications for computer restarts. That way, if it needs to restart, it'll let the user know. So next, and this is fun here. We can go next. So now, uh, let me go to summary. Oh, click this again, go to summary. You'll see it's yellow because it's in progress, but if you hit refresh, it should be done. It's not a big program. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now, if you go to your client computer, which in my case is my server still, uh, go to control panel, system security, configuration manager, actions, you can run this app application de deployment evaluation cycle. That way, this client could go look and see if it needs any software, and it speeds, speeds up the process. So we're going to go to Software Center, and typically this takes you know a few minutes. It doesn't take too long. 
So we'll just wait for that to come through. Nope. Keep doing that. Just go ahead and refresh. What I like to do here too is for deployments, I like to add number of errors, numbers of progress, numbers of success. That way later on I can see how many errors were uh, were occurred and how many are in progress and how many succeeded. Um, another thing I do that I'll show you in the next video to install programs is log the installations. Usually if the programs install correctly or developed correctly, we give the option to log the installation. Uh, what you could do is create like a network share called logs and then point it to there and I have a PowerShell script that opens up the log and checks if it succeeded or not and then if it succeeded it'll place it somewhere specific and if it failed it'll place it somewhere else that way you could see which one's failed and you could open up the log and see why it failed. So let's just hit refresh one more time. Just run this again. Usually it doesn't take too long. If this is your first time to point an application, um, what you're going to want to make sure is that in here in boundaries you have a sub uh, IP address range created uh, because if not it will error it out right away so I just have my IP range here uh, and then my server here Go ahead and pause this for now and then continue recording once it. Okay, guys, uh, it came up. It only took probably like uh, four or five minutes. So we're going to go ahead and hit install. And it's downloading. Just in case you don't know, it's in C. Oops. C. Windows. CCM cache. And then in here so you'll see uh, the icon come up right now like one or two seconds doesn't take too long so the reason why I use scripts and MSI's is because I could edit the MSI's and create an MST file I could depending on what program I could say like no short no desktop shortcuts here's the license or things like that and then my scripts can also customize stuff so in case there's like a server that's needed I can copy that connection and depending on the software next uh, video I'll show a little bit more complicated soft uh, application and that requires scripting um, so here it is we got Adobe Acrobat Reader DC see that and then uh, you can disable uh, the end user license agreement so this doesn't come up every single time. Um, you could like disable this, the welcome screen, and you could you know set different settings. So I'll show you that next video. Uh, just to show you, you could test the uninstall just to make sure that works. And again, it'll probably take a couple seconds, it doesn't take too long. There we go, it's gone. And then if you check here, there we go. It's all gone. So that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to show you a quick way of uh, packaging applications without any scripting, just basic stuff. Uh, so yeah, next video I'll show you a little bit more complicated stuff. Thank you.